many people are now experiencing various forms of extraordinary diabolic attacks. We do not realize that these attacks are already part of the spiritual warfare happening in the world today. In this episode, we will learn about two of the four extraordinary diabolic attacks, obsession and oppression. I'm Veronica Baloy Jimenez and welcome to Who's Calling? Most people at one time or another experience some kind of oppression or obsession in their lives. But how can we tell if what we are undergoing is already an extraordinary diabolical attack? Due to lack of knowledge regarding these diabolical attacks, they are easily mistaken as psychological problems. Paula was very young when it all first began. She would hear unusual noises and see things that scared her. When I was young, I was, I think, sensitive to the spirit world. But because no one explained it to me, I thought everyone has it. I thought before that um, it was not an attack because they don't hurt me. Although I hear them, sometimes I wake up in the evening because of noises. But that's it. And I thought it was a normal thing. It is only when I was already in high school when I think it's already an attack by the devil because it disturbed my sleep, it disturbed my relationships, and also I couldn't function well because I started getting afraid of the dark. And every time the night is coming, I already have this anxiety that I would see something again or I would hear something again. But it ended when I was in high school and it just returned later in my life. Paula could not understand why she was experiencing these things but thought that it was a normal occurrence for any human being. After college, I entered the convent. I thought that time it was a call of God for me to enter the convent and to serve Him. But after just a few months, I started hearing things. At first, it was something nice, like I could hear singing, singing Alleluia, singing with beautiful voices. And I thought I was just late during prayers, so I rushed to the chapel only to find out that it was only 3 a.m. and no one was there. So I went back to my room. So the following day, I heard something like that again. So I peeped first before running to find out that it still dawn and it's only 3 a.m. in the morning so it made me think of what that is is it something beautiful is it something of the Lord or it's from the other side I have no idea of the witching hour before I have no idea how the, the devil attack but because I'm getting tired of waking up early because I have a lot of chores to make the following day it disturbed me already and then after a while I would hear knocking on my door or walking outside my room. So I told my superior about it. And they thought it was just, maybe I was just adjusting inside the convent. The attacks progressed and started to affect her dreams and cause sleep paralysis. I started having sleep paralysis. When I hear something like chirping of, of a bird, I would go into sleep paralysis. And later on, I would see this bird coming inside my, my bedroom at night. And it was a giant bird. And every time I see this bird, I would stiffen. My body would stiffen. It would be very hard for me to breathe. Then one evening, actually, I said, because I thought I was dying, I offered everything to God. And I said, into your hands, Lord, I command my spirit, because I thought I was going to die. So I stopped breathing. And then I experienced this sensation. I don't know if I, I floated. That time, I entered the convent because I was so in love with God. And after the, I think the fifth experience I had there of that scary experience, all my consolations and prayers disappeared. I couldn't sense the presence of God. It's so hard for me to pray. I would have demonic imposition. It's like creating an image out of nothing. 
seeing the face of the devil from everywhere. And I would feel the emotions of the, of the sisters. When someone is angry, I would feel them. Her visions became more intense, affecting her relationship with the other nuns. I started seeing the little, the small demons in the convent. I would see it going to one sister, and then the sister will blurt into anger. I think these creatures tempt the sisters to fight against each other. I started sense their smell. I could, I could smell them. I would see their, when I see their face, it would really affect me. And some of the sisters don't understand why I always cry. Paula's situation in the convent did not get any better as she started to get sick. But the worst part of this oppression was the seeming absence of God's presence in her life despite her love for Him. I know that I'm a child of God, but at that time, no one was directing me about what I was experiencing. So I asked the Lord why these things were happening to me and why I couldn't sense Him anymore. And when I pray, I would experience piercing on my palm, but I didn't mind it. Later on, they sent me to a psychiatrist, and the psychiatrist said that I have Parkinson's disease because I explained to him that during the night my limbs would move. I don't know if that's his uh, basis for saying that I have Parkinson's disease. My legs would uh, be thrown and my head would twitch. I would experience pain in my head, my chest, my arms. And the worst thing for me is not the things that I see, or the pains, or the unexplained experience, but it's the seeming absence of God in my life that time. And no one explained it to me. So um, I was advised by the superior to leave the convent. I said yes right away. Paula recognized that the convent could not help her, so she decided to leave as she could no longer bear the oppression and obsession she was experiencing. Because I always look at her and we were taught that the, the voice of the superiors is always the voice of God. So I said, in obedience, I will leave the convent. However, before Paula left the convent, her superior asked a priest to pray over her. They asked a priest to come in the convent and, and uh, he prayed over me and he interviewed me. He just said that, yes, you are sensitive to the spirits, but that's it. Because that time there was no ministry yet of exorcism in the Archdiocese of Manila. And I am quite sure that they consider me being attacked by the evil spirits, but they are honest enough to say that they don't know how to handle my situation that time. So they asked me to leave. They said they, I can go back, but that's not a calling of God. Up next, symptoms of diabolical obsession include sudden attacks of obsessive thoughts. It can attack the person in many different uh, areas of his life. Many people would easily shrug off experiences such as Paula's and blame it on stress or a disturbed mind. Father Daniel Estacio is an exorcist from the parish of Santo Niño de Taguig in Taguig City, Metro Manila. He tells us about these extraordinary diabolical attacks. Father, what is diabolical obsession? Well, in order for us to understand the diabolical obsession, we need to understand the works of the devil, no? There are two principal categories of the works or the activity of the devil. The first week, what we call the ordinary activity, which is temptation. So everyone is being tempted by the devil. But there's this extraordinary activity of the devil. That means 
uh, anything which is more powerful than temptation. And the first under the category of the extraordinary demonic uh, activity is what we call the possession. When the devil takes full control of the body of the person but not the soul. After the possession, there is what we call infestation. The activity of the devil is concentrated on an object, a uh, place, or animal. And then third, what we call the demonic subjugation, when a person has a pact with the devil. And then the fourth one is demonic obsession. If possession, the devil takes full control of the body of the person, in uh, infestation, the devil is focused on the object, on an animal or a place. Now in obsession, the concentration of the devil is the mind of the person. When we say demonic obsession, it is characterized by intense, sudden, or uh, continued, uh, what we call uh, uncontrollable attack on the mind of the person. And sometimes in the end, because the person is being uh, harassed by the devil in his or her mind, it would end up committing suicide. But what is the difference between a diabolical obsession and just a psychological obsession? Well, uh, in order for us to distinguish, uh, there is this quite similarity in terms of manifestation. Visual hallucination, uh, hearing voices, you know, that sometimes people would be telling us, Oh, Father, is just uh, experiencing psychological problem or mental problem. But in order for us to determine that it is something spiritual is the inefficacy of medicine. No matter how, uh, how many medicines that the person is drinking, as if there's no result or there's no change in terms of the manifestation. And that is the time we can say that, oh, it is something spiritual. And then when we apply spiritual means or spiritual help, and then we see the result. Symptoms of diabolical obsession include sudden attacks of obsessive thoughts, sometimes even extremely absurd, but of such nature that the victim is unable to free himself. Obsession naman is, it's an attack on your psyche. Like you hear voices or it seems that something outside of you is accusing you of something and trying to make you sin or do something that is not of your nature. Before, I have no idea of, ex of any extraordinary attack um, by the devil because it is something that was not learned in school or in sometimes even in a church. Father Daniel explains to us that like in many of his cases, Paula was experiencing extraordinary diabolical attacks called obsession and oppression. Uh, if diabolical uh, obsession, the devil attacks the mind of the person, demonic oppression means uh, physical attack. It can attack the person in many different uh, areas of his life. First, physical attack. Mm -hmm. So that means health of the person. Second, it could uh, attack relationship within family, breaking of marriage, and then also friendship. It would break friendship because that's the work of the devil is to divide. And then the third area in one's life is uh, business or finances. Now, sometimes people uh, having business would uh, eventually experiencing collapse of their business with no apparent cause. You know, sometimes also in the finding a job, difficulty in finding a job, or sometimes in business, uh, in closing, supposed to be you are closing already a deal with someone and then eventually it fails. And then also enjoyment of life. So these are the areas being attacked by the enemy. But uh, most of the time, it is on the level of health. And uh, we, can, uh, uh, we can say that there are a lot of people experiencing deterioration of health with no apparent cause. For example, uh, they would go to one doctor, then another doctor, and then all the laboratory examinations have been done to that person and still the doctors cannot identify the condition or the sickness of the person and uh, probably that person is under attack by the enemy causing deterioration of health. 
But we must be cautious in immediately concluding that the negative things happening in our lives are diabolical in nature. For example, um, you get sick and you have flu-like symptoms or, or let's say you have cancer-like symptoms. How can you tell if, that's, if you really just got sick or it's an oppression? Well, uh, if the doctor has an explanation of the sickness, uh, most probably it is uh, a physical condition. Mm -hmm. But sometimes the devil would also uh, attach you know, to the physical sickness or the devil would also trigger physical sickness. Mm -hmm. So one of the determining factors again that it is spiritual oppression, demonic oppression, is the inefficacy of medicine. That is why when we apply, as I said, spiritual help, you know, sacramentals, doing uh, spiritual uh, assignments, and then the condition improves. Father Daniel says the devil also targets the relationships in families as he knows that family is the basic unit of the church. In cases, for example, where there's oppression within a family, the, the family members are all fighting with each other and there's no peace and happiness in their home. So the whole, all the family members must like, go to confession and be in a state of grace. That's very good, no? If the, the family, the entire member of the family would decide, no? Sometimes it's very difficult to help a person who is not willing to be helped. Yes. So when the family asks us you know, to help them, so we, we talk to them and then uh, we accompany them in searching for that entry point. And then we advise the family, the entire family, to go to the sacrament of confession as a family. And then uh, the prayer of pronouncement. And as much as possible, uh, we advise them to be more patient to each other, to uh, live a virtuous life, especially the virtue of humility, the virtue of meekness, so that the devil would not attach you know, to the emotions. Because sometimes the devil will attach to the emotions and would trigger emotions, especially hatred, anger, so unforgiveness. So these are the sometimes the entry points in the family. Up next, after years of difficulty, Paula found refuge in the Archdiocese of Manila Office of Exorcism. Okay, so first and foremost, uh, it is very important that we need to have an intimate relationship with God. Now, because the best way to deal with the devil is to fall in love. After leaving the convent, Paula thought that the oppression she was undergoing will finally disappear. But the diabolical attacks only got worse. Actually, I have some experiences that I did not experience there. Like at night, I would feel my bed moving and I would hear voices waking me up in the middle of the night, shouting at me. No words, but just oh, like that. It went on for quite a Sometime. Sometimes people would tell you to just drive them away in the name of Jesus. I do that and it's very effective even when I'm still in the convent. I had this inspiration that I just have to focus on the love of God. And when I am confident enough that God is there to protect me, and whatever happens, if He allows it to happen every night, it's fine with me. Every time I feel His love, they disappear. They disappear. After years of difficulty, Paula found refuge in the Archdiocese of Manila Office of Exorcism. The minister explained to her how the devil attacked her through obsession and oppression. I know Father Joss is um, in his ministry and one time I went to him. We were talking actually. And then I said, Father, I think I'm oppressed so I think you have to pray over me. So he prayed over me. During pray over, I had a sensation on my face, like a burning sensation. My eyes were burning, and while he was praying over me, he prayed the Lord's Prayer, and he said, pray with me. 
I couldn't finish it. So I said, one more father. So on the third Our Father, it was the only time that I could finish the prayer. But before I finished the prayer, I was already crying because it was my my face was burning. I, I felt like there's a fire in front of my face. She learned that there were openings in her life that provided the gateway for the devil to enter and oppress her. She found out that in order to battle out obsession and oppression, one must discern the root of sin that feeds the devil. And during that time, my sins flashed before me. And I have seen the sins that I have justified, I have rationalized, the sins that I thought it was just okay with the Lord. I think that was my conversion. Because that time, I was no one explained to me what was happening to me. Some of my friends introduced me to the New Age movement. And they could explain these things very well uh, using Bible verses, using the teachings of the church, but in a different way. They would say that the elementals and others and other spirits are not bad. And we are here to, to coexist with them. We just have to be nice with them and recognize them as equal. And I believe them because they are the ones who could who tried to explain to me what was happening. And I tried to befriend these spirits. And when Father Joseph was already praying over me, I've learned that they are evil spirits. They are the ones trying to pull me away from the Lord. By knowing this, it was my conversion that it is a God who is only the Lord. It's my free will to choose them or not. And it is the church who will guide me to know the truth about the evil, evil spirits and the good spirits of God. Father Daniel says it is important for the person undergoing oppression and obsession to find out the entry points of the devil in his life. How can you help these people who are being oppressed? What should they do? First, uh, of course, in the Ministry of Exorcism, uh, we guide the person and we accompany the person. It's not just enough to pray over the person and expel the demons or the spirit attached to the person. First, we need to identify the entry point because the devil would oppress people or person because the devil would see entry points in that person. And what are those entry points? The first, sin. Now, because as I said, the ordinary activity of the devil is temptation. And when one falls into temptation, the person commits a sin. And when a person commits a sin, the devil has a hold on that person. So you have to identify that particular sin that's being committed to yeah. be able to release this And uh, of oppression. course, uh, to, uh, to release that person, to close those openings, you need uh, to avail of the sacrament of confession. No, that is very important. Then after identifying the entry points, so the entry points could be sin or occult involvement, especially in the provinces, no, here in the Philippines, when a person experiences sickness or illness, no, sometimes, or most of the time in the provinces, they would go to occult practitioners, the no, faith healers, or in Filipino, we call them albularios, mangtatawas. So once, you go to the albularyo and, and mantatawas, you open up yourself to this occult. You know, that is why occult involvement is another form of opening you know, on the person. So those people who have a lot of sins, they have occult involvements, so they, they are most often uh, being attacked you know, by the enemy because there are a lot of entry points in that person. Mm -hmm. So that's the first, identifying the entry points. Mm -hmm. Second is closing that entry point. So we accompany the, pe the person uh, in order for them to close those entry points. Mm -hmm. And then uh, cutting of the bandages, that is prayer of renouncement. Mm -hmm. And then expelling of the spirit. And that is exorcism, uh -huh. the prayer of exorcism. So the prayer of exorcism takes place as the fourth level, the fourth uh, stage. Mm -hmm. And then after the expelling of the spirit is the infilling of the Holy Spirit and then spiritual protection. That is why we advise the, per the person experiencing this demonic oppression and harassment to always be on the state of grace in order for the person to be protected by the grace of God. It was a tough battle for Paula, 
but she learned that no matter how difficult our circumstances might be because of the works of Satan, we must remember that nothing is more powerful than the love of God. Father, what do you advise those who are undergoing diabolical obsession and diabolical oppression? Okay, so first and foremost, uh, it is very important that we need to have an intimate relationship with God. You know, because the best way to deal with the devil is to fall in love with him. Satan's aggressive strategies are aimed at destroying our faith in God. But no amount of evil can defeat us as long as we are equipped with God's spiritual weapons. Our Bible verse for this week is from James chapter 2, verse 19. You believe that there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. Thank you so much for watching. For comments and suggestions, you may visit our Facebook page. Join us again next week for another exciting episode on Who's Calling? This has been Veronica Baluit Jimenez saying, Everything is possible with God when we call on Him. May God bless us all.